guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Brittany from She Run the World Travel Blog, and today I'm going to be giving you a three day itinerary for Buenos Aires, Argentina. For those of you who haven't been following along, I'm on a digital nomad journey through South America, and my first stop was in Argentina. So I spent six weeks in Argentina, five of those weeks specifically in Buenos Aires, and I absolutely fell in love. There's so much to do and see there. It's actually kind of hard for me to narrow it down to three days, but here you go. Here's your three day itinerary. Before we dive in, I just made a video that I posted last week comparing Buenos Aires and Santiago for digital nomads so it goes into a lot more detail about cost of living transportation best neighborhoods those types of things so if you want more information on that go ahead and check that video out now so let's go ahead and dive into your day three itinerary so as you can see on the map pulled up here I have separated all of the pins by day so day one is gonna be red day two is orange and day three is green we're gonna start off by looking at the red pins for day one you're gonna start your day by taking an uber or the bus to the La Boca neighborhood specifically Camanito that's where you'd want to put in for the Uber address. Go ahead and walk around to see the amazing colorful buildings, listen to the music everywhere, watch a tango show. It truly is an area where you'll be on sensory overload, but in the best possible way. Once you've finished up with the La Boca neighborhood, you can start walking or take an Uber up to San Telmo Market for brunch. This is a great indoor market with a bunch of different food stalls and a few shopping stalls as well. I highly recommend just getting a small thing from each stall and just kind of trying it all out doing your own little foodie tour within the market. And once you're done within the actual market, go ahead and exit and walk around the surrounding San Telmo area. It's great for buying souvenirs, it's very charming, very photogenic, spend some time, you know, just walking the streets, taking some cool photos and, and soaking it all in. After that, you're going to continue walking north towards Casa Rosada and Plaza de Mayo. Along the way, you'll see such beautiful squares and buildings. Buenos Aires truly gave me the feeling that I was in Europe, and these buildings really represent that. Once you actually get to the plaza, of course, you know, snap your photos of the pink house and the plaza itself, but then take some time to just relax, people watch, kind of just see what average Buenos Aires daily life is. When we were there, we were lucky enough to just stumble upon the plaza when there was a pride festival going on. There was music everywhere, food, you know, people in awesome costume so it's super fun to just walk around and be in that atmosphere so you never know what you'll find there once you're done go ahead and make your way up to the plaza san martin it's a super nice park to relax in and the buildings nearby are so beautiful again very european and very photogenic so take some time to chill in the park snap some photos and even pop into a cafe nearby to grab some coffee if you want once you're feeling hungry for some dinner end your day by walking along the juana manuela gariti it's a waterfront area as the sun is setting it's a great place to find dinner drinks it's really like this time of night so it's the perfect stroll to just kind of end your day walk and see you know where do you want to eat there's so many restaurants to choose from snap some cool sunset photos over the water and just enjoy the end of your first day I can highly recommend eating at Estillo Campo it's a steakhouse right on the water and it was insanely good so if you want to splurge have some steak be along the water highly recommend that now we're on to day two which are the orange pins so you're gonna start your day off by walking along Avenue Santa Fe and find breakfast then you'll pop into El Atenio Grand Splendid it truly is the most beautiful bookstore I've ever seen it was an old theater that they converted into a bookstore so even if you don't want to buy a book just pop in there snap some photos and just kind of admire the architecture next you're gonna walk up to the Recoleta Cemetery it costs ten dollars to enter and it probably is one of the most famous and touristy things that you can do in Buenos Aires but it really is worth it it's so cool you can spend at least an hour there just walking around seeing all the cemeteries looking how far back the dates go some of the grave sites are just so extraordinary and so detailed with all these columns and these statues it's just so cool to walk around and see them all once you're done and you exit you will see a park with a bunch of little stalls it's kind of like a little market so spend some time walking around there shopping these little artisan crafts maybe grabbing some fresh orange juice before you head up to your next stop once you're ready you're gonna walk across this beautifully painted bridge to the the Museo Nacional de Bellas Artes or the National Museum of Bellas Artes. Even if you don't want to go in, it's a beautiful building and right nearby there is a huge statue. It's called the Floralis Generica. I know I'm not saying that right, but it's basically just this huge metal floral statue. It's super cool to snap some photos. Next, you're going to continue down Avenue President Figuera Alcorta to Museum of Latin American Art. It does cost 900 pesos to enter and when we went and had an awesome Frida Kahlo exhibit, I'm not sure how much longer that's going on, but obviously there's going to 
gonna be super cool exhibits going on year round. The museum itself isn't too, too big, so it's a nice way to kind of just, you know, relax, stroll casually, not feel like you need to be going on to your next destination, but also not feeling super overwhelmed by all the art that there is to see. If you continue on that road, you will run into a huge connection of multiple parks. There are the Japanese gardens there, the February 3rd park, the Paseo El Rosedale Garden Park, and there's so much more. So I would just spend some time walking around, sightseeing, you know, popping down, enjoying some time in the park. It really is so massive and all of the parks are so beautiful in their own way. So I would highly recommend trying to see as much as you possibly can in this park complex. And you're gonna end your night by grabbing dinner and drinks at the end of the park in a place called Avent Garden. It has about eight different restaurants and bars to choose from, so take your pick. It reminded me a lot of Austin, Texas, which is where I lived before I started this digital nomad journey. It was very like hipster, you know, brick buildings, everyone's outside drinking, eating, so it was a very cool atmosphere. Now we're on to our last day here, day three in Buenos Aires, which are the green pins that you see. You're gonna be heading to Tigre to start your day. And there aren't really a ton of eating options in Tigre, especially for breakfast and brunch, so I do recommend grabbing food in Buenos Aires before you go. If you are in the Palermo area, I do recommend going up onto Costa Rica Avenue. There are a bunch of different brunch places there. I highly recommend La Panera Rosa or Ubu Cafe, which is right next door. Once you're finished, you'll go ahead and take an Uber to the Retiro train station. If you haven't gone to Subay cart already and you haven't utilized taking the metro or bus so far, I highly recommend popping into a corner shop, a kiosk, and grabbing one so that way you don't have to wait in line when you get to the train station. Once you do have the Subway card, it's just like riding the metro. You just walk into the station, tap your card, and find the train that you're supposed to be on, which is going towards Tigre. Go ahead and hop on the train, sit and wait. You're gonna ride it all the way to the very end. The very last stop is Tigre, and the total journey takes about 45 minutes. Once you get there, you're gonna walk towards the McDonald's. You can't miss it right when you exit the train station. Right past the McDonald's, you're gonna walk along the water and see all the different boat companies offering different tours. I do recommend taking the six river River tour versus the three river tour it'll take about an hour and 45 minutes total the tour will take you along where this map shows on the screen and you'll see a bunch of different islands in the area and they'll give you great info on the speakers about how the local people live once you finish you'll take the metro back to buenos aires and from there there's not really much to do i would just highly recommend taking an uber back to the palermo neighborhood there's tons of shopping great restaurants great cafes so it's nice to just kind of relax and end your three days in buenos aires this way the palermo neighborhood is where i spent four out of my five weeks in buenos aires so i have tons of eating recommendations if you are looking for you know something fancy steak Argentinian Don Julio is the most famous steakhouse in all of Buenos Aires you will need to make a reservation in advance and it's gonna cost you anywhere from about 11 to 13,000 pesos per plate if you're looking for something a little bit cheaper the great Italian place is called Cucina Paradiso for seafood you have La Pescadorita and if you're a burger lover there's a great little spot called Burger Forever that's really cheap and really good but I do recommend going up to Plaza Serrano it is the best place for nightlife in the Palermo neighborhood. There are food options there too, so if you wanna just go over there first, grab food, and then stay there for drinks, totally up to you. And if you wanna add on a unique bar experience, head to The Whole Bar Alcatraz. It's a really cool themed speakeasy. The theme is so cool. Obviously the theme is Alcatraz, so you walk in and you genuinely feel like you're in jail. There are jail cells everywhere. All the waiters and bartenders are wearing, you know, orange jumpsuits. It's just super cool and unique, so I would recommend it. It is a little bit pricey though. It costs $15 for entry with one drink or you can pay $20 and get two drinks. So definitely a little bit more pricey than anywhere else you'd get in Buenos Aires, but you're paying for the theme and the experience. There you have it, your jam-packed three-day itinerary for Buenos Aires, Argentina. Honestly, I'm usually not a very big city person. I'm usually like, hey, cool city, let's get out and go into the nature. But Buenos Aires, I absolutely fell in love. Like I said, I spent five weeks here and I could see myself living there full time. I, I love this city so much and I hope that you love it as much as I do. If you do want to get out of the city though, I do recommend taking a flight to El Calafate within Argentina. This is the Patagonia region and I can't recommend this area enough. It is hands down one of the most beautiful places I've ever seen. And if you're in Buenos Aires, you might as well hop on the flight. It's only, you know, two and a half three hours away. I have two videos on Patagonia, one on planning a day-by-day -day itinerary and one on everything that you should know before you go. So make sure to check those videos out if you are planning on going to that region while you're visiting Buenos Aires. If you found this video helpful and you're planning a Buenos Aires trip, go ahead and give this video a like and don't forget to hit that subscribe button as I continue my digital nomad journey through South America. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in Ecuador.